Welcome to Java quiz series. Is JVM platform independent? You have option A, yes, option B, no. Well, you have five seconds to answer this quiz. Well, the answer is no because so JVM is basically platform dependent and each operating system like Windows, Linux, operating system have their own specific version of JVM. Well, when you convert a Java code into bytecode, bytecode is basically platform independent, but JVM is platform dependent. All the operating systems have their own specific version of JVM and that JVM will basically run the bytecode on that particular platform. Can you run a Java program without JRV? Option A, S, Option B, No. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. You can comment your answer in the comment section. Well, the correct answer is no. You cannot run a Java program without JRE. Well, JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment and in order to run the Java program or a Java application, you have to use JRE. Well, JRE includes a JVM, core libraries and other components necessary to run the Java applications. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a question. What does the equal equal operator compare in Java objects? Option A values, option B, references, option C, hash codes, option D, fields. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. Well, the answer is references. In Java, equal equal operator compares the memory addresses or references of the two objects, not their contents. If two object references point to the same memory location, then equal equal operator returns true otherwise it returns false to compare the actual content of the two objects you should use the equals method the equals method is used to check the actual content of the two objects and it can be overridden in your classes to compare object properties welcome to java quiz series here is another question which of the following is not a primitive data type in java option a byte option b string option c double option d short well you have five seconds to answer this question well the answer is string well string is a reference data type not a primitive data type well java supports eight primitive data types such as byte short int long double uh, int float char boolean okay so these are the eight primitive data types and string is not a primitive data type is it is a reference data type Okay, so basically string is a class, inbuilt class in Java. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What is the default value of int data type? Option A, 0, option B, 1, option C, null, option D, undefined. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. Well, the correct answer is 0. In Java, the default value of int data type is 0. This default value is automatically assigned to an int variable if it is declared as a class member or instance variable and not explicitly initialized. Local variables in methods, however, must be explicitly initialized before use. They do not receive a default values. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What data type can store a single character? Option A, string option b byte option c char option d int well you have five seconds to answer this question well the correct answer is option c char in java the char data type is used to store a single character so char is basically a primitive data type it represents a single 16-bit encode character the char data type can be used to store any single character such as letter, digit, functional mark or a control character within a single quotes. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What is the default value of boolean in Java? Option A, 0. Option B, false. Option C, true. Option D, undefined. Well, you have 5 seconds to answer this question. Well, the correct answer is option b false well in java boolean is a primitive data type and it basically has a two values false and true 
and the default value for a boolean data type is false all right welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which loop construct in java is the best suited when the number of iterations is known option a for loop option b while loop option c do while loop option d break statement well you have five seconds to answer this question well the correct answer is for loop when the number of iterations is known the for loop is best suited in java it allows you to specify the initialization condition and increment decrement in a single line making it ideal for iterating a known number of times welcome to java quiz series here is one more question which loop construct in java is the best suited when the number of iterations is unknown option a for loop option b while loop option c do while loop option d break statement well you have a 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b while loop the while loop is ideal for situations with an unknown number of iterations because it evaluates its condition at the start of each loop iteration this makes it flexible for looping until a specific condition is met without needing to know the exact number of times the loop will execute in advance welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which loop construct guarantees that loop body is executed at least once option a for loop option b while loop option c do while loop option d break statement well you have 5 seconds to answer this question well the correct answer is option c do while loop the do while loop construct in java guarantees that the loop body is executed at least once this is because it checks the condition after executing the loop body ensuring that body runs at least once regardless of the condition's initial truth value welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which statement is used to exit a loop prematurely option a return statement option b continue statement option c break statement option d exit statement well you have 5 seconds to answer this question well the correct answer is option c break statement well the break statement is used to exit the loop the loop can be for loop while loop or do while loop even the break statement is also used in a switch case statements the break statement terminates the loop and transfers execution to the statement immediately following the loop welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question what is the purpose of continue statement in a loop option a to exit the loop immediately to skip the current iteration and move to the next iteration option c to terminate the program option d to exit a specific block of code well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b to skip the current iteration and move to the next iteration well the continue statement in a loop is used to skip the current iteration and proceed to the next iteration of the loop welcome to java quiz series here is one more question which loop construct is the best suited for iterating word and array or a collection option a for each loop option b while loop option c do while loop option d break statement well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a for each loop well the for each loop is also called a nulled for loop it is best suited for iterating over an array or a collection in java it simplifies the syntax for iterating through each element without needing to use an index or iterator explicitly welcome to java quiz series here is one more question which keyword in java is used for a constant variables option a const option b static option c constant option d final well you have 5 seconds to answer this question
the correct answer is option d final well in java the final keyword is used to declare a constant variables once a variable is declared with final its value cannot be modified effectively making it a constant value all right in java we can use final keyword to make a variable as a constant or a final so that its value cannot be modified or a new value cannot be assigned to a constant variable or a final variable welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question how many string objects created in a below statement string s equal to abc string s equal to new string and then abcd option a one object option b two objects option c three objects option d four objects well you have five seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option c three objects the first statement creates one string object that is abc in the string construct pool if it is not already exist in the pool second statement has a abcd string literal which gets created in a string construct pool and this new string so this will create a new string object in a heap memory so there are total three string objects welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question what is the primary difference between string buffer and string builder regarding thread safety option a string builder is a thread safe while string buffer is not option b both string buffer and string builder are thread safe option c string buffer is a thread safe while string builder is not option d neither string builder or string buffer is thread safe well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option c string buffer is thread safe while string builder is not well in java string buffer is a synchronized making it thread safe on the other hand string builder is not synchronized offering better performance in single threaded scenarios but it is not a thread safe welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is an object in java option a a type of a variable option b an instance of a class option c a function option d a data structure well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b object is an instance of a class well as we know that in java a class is a blueprint or a template for creating objects an object is an instance of a class and we typically create a object in java using new keyword and each object basically contains its own state and behavior so if you compare with the real time then objects represents a real world entities by holding specific values and performing actions welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is a class in java option a a blueprint for creating objects option b a specific instance of a class option c a function option d a data structure well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a a blueprint for creating objects well in java a class is a blueprint or a template from which individual objects are created welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which keyword is used to create an instance of a class option a new keyword option b return keyword option c this keyword option d create keyword well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a new keyword well in java we use a new keyword to create object of the class okay so the new keyword is used to instantiate an object of a class welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is the constructor in java option a a method that constructs variable names option b a block of code used for initializing an object option c a special variable inside a class option d a return type of a method well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b a block of code used for initializing an object well the constructor in java is a special method used to initialize the objects and when you create a instance of a class then the constructor will get called to initialize the object 
and a constructor has the same name as a class name. All right, in Java, constructor is a special method that is called when an object is instantiated, and the primary purpose of constructor is to initialize the newly created object. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What is the inheritance in Java? Option A, the process of creating multiple instances of a class. Option B, the process of hiding data and methods within a class. Option C, the process of reusing code from existing classes. Option D, the process of combining data and methods into a single unit. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, the process of reusing code from existing classes. Well, inheritance is a mechanism in Java that allows a class to inherit properties and methods from another class. So basically, inheritance promotes a code reusability. It means a subclass can inherit the properties and methods from a superclass. And subclass also can define its own unique, you know, properties and methods as well. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What is encapsulation in Java? Option A, the process of combining data and methods into single unit. Option B, the process of hiding data and methods within a class. Option C, the process of creating multiple instances of a class. Option D, the process of reusing the code from existing classes. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, the process of combining data and methods into a single unit. Well, encapsulation is one of the four fundamental object-oriented programming concepts. The main idea behind encapsulation is to bind together the data and the methods that operate on data into a single unit or a class. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is the constructor chaining in Java? Option A, calling one constructor for another within the same class. Option B, creating multiple constructors with the same name. Option C, connecting two different classes through their constructors. Option D, a sequence of constructors calling each other in a different classes. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, calling one constructor from another within a same class. Constructor chaining refers to the scenario in Java where one constructor calls another constructor in a same class using this function. Well, let us say you have a class within that you have multiple constructors and let us say you want to call one constructor from another constructor within a same class. Then you can use this function. So this keyword as a function. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What happens if no constructor is defined in a Java class? Option A, a class cannot create objects. Option B, a default constructor is provided by Java compiler. Option C, an error occurs during compilation. Option D, the class uses constructor for its super class. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, a default constructor is provided by Java compiler. Well, whenever you don't create any constructor in a class, then by default, Java compiler will automatically provide a default constructor. And whenever you create object of that class, then the default constructor will get called. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. How is polymorphism typically achieved in Java? Option A, through the use of interfaces. Option B, by overloading methods. Option C, by overriding methods. Option D, both B and C. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option D, both B and C. Well, polymorphism in Java is commonly achieved through method overriding as well as method overloading. So the method overloading is called compile time polymorphism and the method overriding is called um, runtime polymorphism. Okay. So in Java, the polymorphism is achieved through both method overloading as well as method overriding. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Can a static method be overridden in Java? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Option C, only if it's in a superclass. Option D, 
only if it's in a subclass you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b no well in java static methods belongs to a class not a instances and cannot be overridden in a subclass since static methods belongs to a class itself not to any particular instance they cannot be dynamically changed or overridden in a subclasses instead static methods can be hidden in a subclasses using the same method name but this is not a true overriding welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is the use of this keyword in a constructors option a to call another construct in a same class option b to refer to the current class instance option c to call a method in a same class option d both a and b well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is both option a and option b well the this keyword is used in a constructor to call another constructor in a same class and it is also used to refer to the current class instance okay welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is a package in java option a a collection of classes and interfaces option b a type of data structure option c a method option d an operator well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a a collection of classes and interfaces well a package in java is a namespace that organizes a set of classes and interfaces think of it as a folder in a file directory by using packages you can group related classes together making your code more organized and modular welcome to java quiz series here is one more question can a class in java be both abstract and final option a yes option b no well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b no well whenever we create a abstract class with abstract methods then we have to inherit the abstract class and we have to override the abstract methods and we have to provide the implementation right and in case of final class whenever we create a class with a final keyword then that final class cannot be inherited right so hence we cannot use you know the abstract and final keywords to create a class okay so in java a class cannot be both abstract and final welcome to java quiz series here is one more question how does java support multiple inheritance option a using classes option b using interfaces option c using enums option d using abstract classes well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is using interfaces well java does not support multiple inheritance through classes due to the complexity and potential issues it could introduce such as diamond problem however java allows a class to implement multiple interfaces which enables a form of multiple inheritance all right so in java we can achieve a multiple inheritance using interfaces because a class can implement multiple interfaces and override the methods from the multiple interfaces and provide the implementation welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which keyword is used to prevent a class from being inherited option a final keyword option b abstract keyword option c static keyword option d extends keyword well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a final keyword well whenever we create a class with a final keyword then that class cannot be subclassed or extended so this basically prevent a class from being inherited in java welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question what is the purpose of super keyword in java option a to refer to the current object option b to invoke the super class constructor or methods option c to create a multiple instance of a class option d to hide the data and methods within a class well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b to invoke the super class constructor or methods well the super keyword in java is used to refer to the super class or a parent class of the current object it is commonly used 
to invoke the superclass constructor or methods within a subclass. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What is the purpose of this keyword in Java? Option A to refer to the current object. Option B to invoke the superclass constructor or methods. Option C to create multiple instances of a class. Option D to hide the data and methods within a class. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A to refer to the current object. Well, the this keyword in Java is used to refer to the current object within an instance method or a constructor. It is often used to distinguish between instance variables and method parameters. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. What is the purpose of final keyword in Java? Option A to prevent the inheritance of class. Option B to prevent overriding of a method. Option C to prevent modification of a variable's value. Option D all of the above. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option D all of the above. We use final keyword to prevent the inheritance of a class. It means once we create a class with a final keyword, we cannot extend that class. We use final keyword to prevent the wording of a class. Well, once we create a method with a final keyword, we cannot override that method in a subclass. Next, we can use final keyword to prevent the modification of a variable's value. Well, once we define a member variable with a final keyword, we cannot assign a value or we cannot modify the final member, you know, value in the class. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which keyword is used to inherit the properties and methods from another class? Option A, import keyword. Option B, package keyword. Option C, extends keyword. Option D, implements keyword. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, extends keyword. Well, basically this is the inheritance concept. For example, let's say we have class A, it has the properties and methods. Next, let's say we have class B and it want to inherit the properties and methods from the class A. So class B, it can use extends keyword to inherit the properties and methods from a class A. So this is the inheritance concept. And in Java, we use extends keyword to extend a class from another class and inherit the properties and methods from that another class. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more simple question. What is the root class for all Java classes? Option A, object class. Option B, class. Option C, super class. Option D, root. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, object class. Well, in Java, object class is a root class of class hierarchy. Every class has an object as a super class. Okay. So whenever you create your own class, then that class implicitly extends the object class so that you can override the object class methods and you can provide its own implementation. All right. Great. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which of these classes is immutable in Java? Option A, string. Option B, string buffer. Option C, string builder. Option D, both B and C. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, string. In Java, string objects are immutable, meaning once a string object is created, its value cannot be changed. Any modification to the existing string object results in the creation of new string object. On the other hand, string buffer and string builder are immutable, meaning once you create the object of string buffer or a string builder class, then you can change its value. Okay. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Can an interface have a constructor in Java? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, no. Well, in Java, interfaces cannot have a constructors because they cannot be instantiated. In order to create object of the class, the class should have a constructor. Okay. And interfaces 
cannot have a constructors in Java because they cannot be instantiated. In order to create object of the interface, you have to create a class and that class implements the interface. Then only you can be able to create object of the class which implements the interface. Welcome to Java quiz. Here is one more question. Is it possible to create an instance of an interface? Option A, yes. Option B, no. You have 5 seconds to answer this question. Correct answer is option B, no. We cannot instantiate or create object of an interface directly. However, we can create a reference variables of an interface type. For example, we can create a class that implements an interface and then we can create object of that class. Welcome to Java quiz. Here is a one more question. Can an interface inherit from a class? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, no. In Java, an interface cannot inherit from a class. It can only extend other interfaces. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Can an interface method be declared as a final? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, no. In Java, the methods in an interface are implicitly abstract and the abstract methods cannot be final because abstract method is a method it does not have implementation, right? By default, the methods in an interface are implicitly abstract, okay? So just remember these kind of questions you may get in the interviews. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. An interface with no methods is known as option A, abstract interface, option B, marker interface, option C, empty interface, option D, functional interface. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, marker interface. Well, in Java, an interface with no defined methods is known as marker interface. It is used to mark classes that supports certain capabilities. Just remember, the interface it don't have any methods is known as marker interface and this marker interface is useful to mark classes that support certain capabilities. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. How does Java support multiple inheritance? Option A using classes. Option B using interfaces. Option C using enums. Option D using abstract classes. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is using interfaces. Well, Java does not support multiple inheritance through classes due to the complexity and potential issues it could introduce such as diamond problem. However, Java allows a class to implement multiple interfaces, which enables a form of multiple inheritance. All right. So in Java, we can achieve a multiple inheritance using interfaces because a class can implement multiple interfaces and override the methods from the multiple interfaces and provide the implementation. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which keyword is used to prevent a class from being inherited? Option A, final keyword. Option B, abstract keyword. Option C, static keyword. Option D, extends keyword. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, final keyword. Well, whenever we create a class with a final keyword, then that class cannot be subclassed or extended. So this basically prevent a class from being inherited in Java. Welcome to Java quiz. Here is a one more question. In Java 9, which type of methods can be added to interfaces to share a code between methods? Option A, static methods. Option B, private methods. Option C, final methods. Option D, protected. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, private methods. Well, starting from Java 9, interfaces can have private methods which can help in sharing code between methods 
without exposing them to the external classes. Well, as we know that Java 8 onwards, we can define the static and default methods in an interface. And Java 9 onwards, we can also define the private methods in an interface. Well, private methods are useful because we can keep the common code in a private method and we can call those private methods in a default methods in an interface. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Can enums extend another classes in Java? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Option C, only abstract classes. Option D, only other enums. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, no. So in Java, enums cannot extend other classes because they already implicitly extend the enum class. All right, so enums cannot extend other classes in Java because they implicitly extend the inbuilt enum class. However, they can implement interfaces. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Can an enum have a constructor? Option A, yes, it can be public. Option B, yes, it must always be private. Option C, no enums cannot have a constructors. Option D, yes, but it must be protected. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, yes, but it must always be private. Well, the enums can have constructors, but they are always private. This is to prevent the creation of new enum instances. Okay, so this is an important question and you may get this kind of question in interviews. So just remember, enums can have a constructors, but they are always private. So this is because to prevent the creation of new enum instances. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Which interface is used to create a thread in Java? Option A, runnable interface. Option B, callable interface. Option C, future interface. Option D, comparator interface. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, runnable interface. Well, in Java, the runnable interface is commonly used to create a threads. It is a functional interface that defines a single method called run method, which contains a code that will be executed by the thread. So to create a thread, you can implement the runnable interface in a class and then pass an instance of that class to the thread object. And you can use Lambda expression to implement a runnable functional interface as well. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. In Java, what is the primary purpose of thread class? Option A, file handling. Option B, string operations. Option C, network operations. Option D, creating and executing threads. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option D, creating and executing threads. Well, in Java, the thread class is a fundamental class for multi-threading. It represents a thread of execution in a program. The primary purpose of thread class is to create and manage threads allowing concurrent execution of multiple parts of the program. All right, option D is correct because the thread class in Java is specifically designed for creating and executing threads, making it central to multi-threading in Java. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Which method is used to start the execution of a thread? Option A, run method. Option B, start method. Option C, execute method. Option D, go method. Well, we have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is start method. Well, the start method in Java is used to start the execution of a thread. When you call the start method, the thread state moves from new state to runnable state and the Java virtual machine invokes the threads run method. So this allows the thread to execute its task in a parallel with other threads. Okay. So just remember in order to start the execution of the thread, you have to call the start method and JVM will internally call the run method to execute the task. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is the purpose of join method when you know a thread object? Option A, it terminates the thread. Option B, it pauses the thread. Option C, it stops the thread. Option D, it exits the program. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, 
it forges the thread. Well, the join method in Java is used to forge the execution of a current thread until the thread on which join was called has finished executing. So this is useful when you want to ensure that a particular thread completes its task before the program proceeds further. For example, if you have a thread performing some essential computation and other threads depends on the result of that computation, then you can use this join method to make sure that dependent threads wait for the computation to finish. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is the purpose of wait method in a Java threads? Option A, it forces the execution of a thread. Option B, to terminate a thread. Option C, to notify other threads to resume execution. Option D, to release the lock held by the thread. So you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is, it forces the execution of a thread. Well, the wait method in Java is used to force the execution of a current thread until another thread notifies it to resume. When a thread calls wait method, it releases the lock it holds on the object and enters in a waiting state. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. How can thread be forced to sleep for a specific amount of time? Option A using sleep method. Option B using wait method. Option C using yield method. Option D using forced method. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A using slip method. Well, in Java, slip method is a static method and it is belongs to thread class. This slip method is used to force the execution of a current thread for a specific number of milliseconds. Well, this slip method is pretty useful for creating delays in a program execution or managing the timing of thread operations. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which class is the super class of all exceptions and error classes in Java? Option A, exception class. Option B, error class. Option C, throwable class. Option D, object class. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, throwable class. Well, in Java, the throwable class is a super class of all the errors and exceptions in a Java language. Both the exception and error classes are directly subclasses of throwable class. So this design allows the Java programmers to handle all kinds of errors and exceptions in a unified hierarchy. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Which keyword is used to manually throw an exception in Java? Option A, new keyword. Option B, throw keyword. Option C, throws keyword. Option D, throwable class. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, throw keyword. Well, in Java, the throw keyword is used to explicitly throw an exception. The new keyword is used to create an object of the class and throws keyword is used to declare a, you know, exception as a signature in the method. Throwable is basically class and throw is basically a keyword that we use to explicitly throw an you know, exception. That's why the answer is option B, throw. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which of these is a checked exception? Option A, null pointer exception. Option B, arithmetic exception. Option C, IO exception. Option D, index out of bounds exception. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, IO exception. Well, in Java, IO exception is a inbuilt checked exception and checked exceptions need to be either caught or declared in a method signature using throws keyword. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more quiz question. What is the use of finally block? Option A, it catches any exception. Option B, it executes whether an exception is thrown or not. Option C, it executes only when an exception is thrown. Option D, it executes only when an exception is not thrown. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. Well, the correct answer is option B, it always executes whether an exception is thrown or not. 
Well, the final block is executed after the try and catch blocks, regardless of whether an exception is thrown or caught. So this final block is a perfect place to perform the cleanup operations like closing the files or closing the database connections. Alright, answer B is correct because it states that the final block executes whether an exception is thrown or not. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. An interface with no methods is known as option A, abstract interface, option B, marker interface, option C, empty interface, option D, functional interface. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, marker interface. Well, in Java, an interface with no defined methods is known as marker interface. It is used to mark classes that supports certain capabilities. Just remember, the interface it don't have any methods is known as marker interface and this marker interface is useful to mark classes that support certain capabilities. Welcome to Java quiz. Here is a one more question. In Java 9, which type of methods can be added to interfaces to share a code between methods? Option A, static methods. Option B, private methods. Option C, final methods. Option D, protected. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, private methods. Well, starting from Java 9, interfaces can have private methods which can help in sharing code between methods without exposing them to the external classes. Well, as we know that Java 8 onwards, we can define the static and default methods in an interface and Java 9 onwards, we can also define the private methods in an interface. Well, private methods are useful because we can keep the common code in a private method and we can call those private methods in a default methods in an interface. Welcome to Java quiz and here is one more question. What is the purpose of instance of operator? Option A, multiply instances. Option B, compare two references. Option C, check if an object is an instance of specific class or interface. Option D, to create a new instance of a class. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, Check if an object is an instance of a specific class or an interface. Well, in Java, the instance of operator is used to check if an object belongs to a particular class or implements a particular interface. Okay. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is the root interface of a Java collection framework hierarchy? Option A, collection interface. Option B, set interface. Option C, collections. Class, option D list interface well you have five seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a collection interface in a java collections framework the collection interface is a root interface of the hierarchy the other interfaces like list set queue so these interfaces extends this collection interface and this collection interface basically defines all the common you know methods Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Which data structure ArrayList internally uses? Option A, Vector. Option B, Linked List. Option C, Array. Option D, Double Linked List. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is Option C, Array. Well, in Java, the ArrayList class internally uses dynamic array to store its elements. And as the ArrayList grows, and the capacity of the underlying array is exceeded, the array list creates a new larger array and it copies the old elements from old array to the new array. Okay. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Which class provides a thread shape implementation of a list interface? Option A, array list. Option B, copy and write array list. Option C, link list. Option D, vector. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, copy and write array list. Well, copy and write array list class is a thread safe variant of array list in which all the modifications are implemented by creating a separate copy of the underlying array. Option 
B is correct because copy and write array list is specifically designed to provide a thread safe operation on a list without requiring the external synchronization. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which collection ensures that elements are processed in a post in post out order? Option A has set. Option B linked has set. Option C linked list. Option D priority queue. So you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C linked list. In Java, linked list class is commonly used to maintain first in first order when it is used as a queue. The linked list class implements both list and dequeue interfaces, allowing it to function as a queue. Other collections like has set, linked has set, and priority queue do not guarantee first in first order ordering. Okay. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. Has set internal uses option A vector. Option B, array list. Option C, hash map. Option D, Q. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, hash map. Well, the hash set class internal uses hash map to store its elements. When you add an element to hash set, it actually becomes a key in an underlying hash map with a constant dummy value associated with it. The uniqueness of the elements in a hash set is ensured because hash map keys must be unique. Okay, so just remember hash set internal uses hash map to store its elements and when you add an element to the hash set, it actually becomes a key in an underlying hash map with a constant dummy value associated with it. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Can a hash map contain duplicate keys? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Option C, only null keys. Option D, only null values. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. Correct answer is option B, no. In hash map, each key is a unique. Adding new entry with the existing key replaces the old value with the new one. Okay. In a hash map, each key should be unique. And if you try to add a new entry with the existing key, then it will replace the old value with the new one. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is the default initial capacity of a hash map in Java? Option A, 8. Option B, 14. Option C, 16. Option D, 10. You have 5 seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, 16. In Java, the HashMap class has a default initial capacity of 16. This means that when you create a HashMap without specifying the initial capacity, it is initialized with a space for 16 key value pairs before it needs to be resized. Okay. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is a one more question. Which of these classes should be preferred to be used as a key in a HashMap? Option A, string class. Option B, integer. Option C, double. Option D, all of the above. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option D, all of the above. Well, all the classes such as string, integer, double, override the hash code and equals method, making them suitable to be used as a keys in a hash map. In fact, any class that correctly overrides equals and hash code methods can be used as a key. However, it is essential that the key remains immutable. So among the options given, string, integer, double are immutable. So they are a good choices for keys in a hash map. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is the concurrent hash map in Java? Option A, a synchronized version of hash map. Option B, a type of linked list. Option C, a type of array. Option D, a collection of you know, sorted key value pairs. You have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option A, a synchronized version of hash map. Concurrent hash map is a thread shape variant of hash map in Java and it is specifically designed for concurrent access by multiple threads. Concurrent hash map allows 
multiple threads to read and modify the map simultaneously without correct corrupting the data all right option a is correct because concurrent hash map is a synchronized version of hash map optimized for use in a concurrent environment welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is the lambda expression in java option a a lightweight thread option b a lightweight process option c a concise way to represent an anonymous function option d a type of loop construct well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option c a concise way to represent an anonymous function well as we know that lambda expressions are introduced in java 8 and we can use lambda expression to achieve the functional programming in java and lambda expression basically does not have a name that's why it is called a anonymous function and we use a lambda expression to write a concise and clear code so basically we reduce a lot of code by using lambda expressions and we use lambda expression to implement the functional interfaces in java welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what are the lambda expressions primarily used for option a to create a new threads option b for database operations option c to implement event listeners option d to provide implementation of functional interfaces well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option d to provide implementation of a functional interfaces well in java lambda expressions are primarily used to provide the implementations for a functional interfaces in a concise way well as we know that functional interface is a interface with a sim- single abstract method and we use the lambda expression to implement the functional interface isn't it so the primary use of lambda expression is to implement the functional interfaces in a concise way welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which of these is a valid lambda expression in java option a x comma y and then x plus y option b x comma y within a bracket and then x plus y option c x comma y and then x plus y option d x plus y well you have 5 seconds to answer this question well answer b is correct because this is a valid lambda expression and whenever you have uh, more than two parameters in a lambda expression then this parameter should be included in a parenthesis and followed by a lambda symbol that is arrow operator and then followed by the lambda body so this is the correct syntax of a lambda expression and the option a is incorrect because there is no parenthesis and option c is incorrect because the arrow operator is not there and uh, of course option d is also incorrect welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question can lambda expressions be passed as arguments to a method option a yes option b no option c only in a static methods option d none you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a yes so lambda expressions can be passed as arguments or parameters to the methods particularly those that expect a functional interface as a parameter so as we know that functional interface is a interface it has a single abstract method and we use a lambda expression to provide implementation of a functional interface and in order to pass a lambda expression as a parameter to a method then that method should take functional interface as a parameter okay welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question what is the functional interface in java option a an interface with multiple abstract methods option b an interface with only one abstract method option c any interface in java option d marker interface well you have 5 seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option b an interface with only one abstract method well an functional interface in java is a interface that contains exactly one abstract method it can have any number of default or static methods but contains only one abstract method and whenever you want to create a functional interface in java then we have to create a interface with only one abstract method and you have to annotate it that interface with at functional interface annotation and we typically use lambda expression to implement a functional interfaces in java Welcome to Java Quiz series. Here is one more question: Which annotation is used to declare a functional interface in Java? Option A: add functional interface annotation. Option B: 
at interface annotation option c at lambda annotation option d at functional annotation well you have five seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a at functional interface annotation the at functional interface annotation is usually to declare a functional interface in java 8 the functional interface is an interface with a single abstract method so whenever you want to create a functional interface in java then you have to annotate that functional interface with add functional interface annotation and make sure that that functional interface should have only one single abstract method and you can use a lambda expression to implement that functional interface welcome to java quiz series here is one more question how many abstract methods can a functional interface have option a one option b two option b c as many as needed option d none well you have five seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a one well a functional interface in java can have only one abstract method but it can have any number of default and static methods okay just remember a functional interface in java is an interface it should have only one abstract method and we typically use a lambda expression to provide implementation of a functional interfaces in java welcome to java quiz series here is a one more question which of the following is a built-in functional interface in java option a renewable interface option b list interface option c collection interface option d set interface you have five seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a runnable interface well runnable interface is a built-in functional interface in java and it is obtained used with a lambda expression for creating a threads okay so functional interface is interface it has only one single abstract method and runnable interface is a functional interface and it has a single you know run method and in order to implement the runnable method we can use a lambda expression or a class that implements a runnable interface override the run method and provide the implementation welcome to java quiz series here is one more question can functional interfaces have a default methods option a yes option b no option c only static methods are allowed option d only if they are final well we have five seconds to answer this question the correct answer is option a yes a functional interface in java is an interface that contains exactly one abstract method but it can contain any number of static or default methods all right and whenever you want to create a functional interface then create an interface and define a single abstract method and you can define any number of default or a static methods within a functional interface and make sure to annotate a functional interface with at functional interface annotation and we use a lambda expression to implement a functional interface welcome to java quiz series here is one more question what is the purpose of optional class in java option a to handle exceptions in a functional programming paradigm option b to represent nullable values safety and avoid null pointer exceptions option b to perform IO operations on file sign directories. Option D, to enable concurrent programming. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option B, to represent nullable values safely and avoid null pointer exceptions. Well, the optional class in Java 8 is used to represent nullable values safely and prevent a null pointer exceptions by providing a way to handle empty or null values. Well, optional class is introduced in Java 8 to specifically handle the null pointer exceptions. Welcome to Java quiz series. Here is one more question. What is a method reference in Java? Option A, a reference to a static method. Option B, a way to call a method using its name. Option C, an alternative syntax to lambda expressions for a method invocation. Option D, a type of exception handling. Well, you have five seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is option C, an alternative syntax to lambda expressions for a method invocation. Well, method references were introduced in Java 8 and method references are alternative shortened syntax to lambda expressions used to refer directly to the methods. Welcome to Java quiz. Here is a one more question. In Java 9, which type of methods can be added to interfaces to share a code between methods 
ऑप्शन ए स्टैटिक मेथड्स ऑप्शन बी प्राइवेट मेथड्स ऑप्शन सी फाइनल मेथड्स ऑप्शन डी प्रोटेक्टेड वेल यू हैव फाइव सेकेंड्स टू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी प्राइवेट मेथड्स वेल स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम जावा नाइन इंटरफेसेस कैन हैव प्राइवेट मेथड्स विच कैन हेल्प इन शेयरिंग कोड बिटवीन मेथड्स विदाउट एक्सपोजिंग दैम टू द एक्सटर्नल क्लासेस वेल एज वी नो दैट जावा एट ऑनवर्ड्स वी कैन डिफाइन द स्टैटिक एंड डिफॉल्ट मेथड्स इन इंटरफेस एंड जावा नाइन ऑनवर्ड्स वी कैन ऑल्सो डिफाइन द प्राइवेट मेथड्स इन इंटरफेस वेल प्राइवेट मेथड्स आर यूजफुल बिकॉज वी कैन कीप द कॉमन कोड इन अ प्राइवेट मेथड एंड वी कैन कॉल दोज प्राइवेट मेथड्स इन अ डिफॉल्ट मेथड्स इन अ इंटरफेस